A little over a month ago, I reviewed the Lotmax SC10, which was a very impressive FDM 3D printer based very closely on the CR20, but with some serious improvements. In that video, I was incredibly excited about it and it definitely got my seal of approval. Well, in today's video, we're gonna be looking at another machine from Lotmax. This time it is a resin printer called the Lotmax CH10 or Iron Box, which after receiving it, I can very easily see how it got its name. I'm really curious to see with how impressed I was with their FDM printer, how they did with their resin printer and with the amount of machines I've tested out over the past year, how it really stacks up in comparison to those other printers. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Lotmax CH10. We're going to talk a bit about the specs. We're gonna talk about my experience. And of course, we're gonna do some 3D printing. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. The build volume on the CH10 is 120 by 68 by 155 millimeters, which is pretty standard to a lot of these smaller desktop 3D printers. The LCD panel on it is a 2K panel, which will allow you to get very, very high quality prints. The bed rises up and down on a singular lead screw and what looks like a linear rail, but it's not quite a linear rail. Lotmax has a little excerpt about it saying that it's some special formulation that's supposed to make the bed more rigid and make sure that it stays parallel with the LCD screen. For how small this printer is, as far as its overall form factor, it is incredibly heavy. They say it weighs 17 pounds, but I'm convinced it probably weighs a bit more than that, and it's definitely why it got the name Iron Box. The thing is a serious little tank. When you move it, you expect it to be relatively light compared to a lot of other resin printers I've used, but it has got a lot of weight to it. So most of the resin printers that I've tested out have a lid where you take the lid, it's usually acrylic of some sort, and you take it off completely and put it off to the side. Well, on the Lotmax CH10, it has just a handle that lifts the front and top part of the printer back, and it's on these two really beefy hinges. So the thing I like about that is it's really easy to take with one hand while you're resin printing, grab that, lift it back, while on a lot of my other resin printers, over time, from me having to grab the whole entire lid and put it on and put it off, I get resin all over it. So it's really nice being able to just use literally two fingers to open up and access your printer. The caveat to that is that it's a lot tighter inside and so when you're tightening the vat down, you kind of have to go in at an angle to tighten the screws, but it's definitely a trade-off that I think I'd be willing to take. The front of the printer features a three and a half inch touchscreen, which is really bright and works very well. It also has an awesome power button. It's like a PC case power button with a LED built inside of it, so it's easy to turn on and off. Standard 3D printers, the resin 3D printers for the most part, have a little rocker switch on the back of the machine. I personally like this a lot better. It's front and center, it's very easy to access, and it gets definitely thumbs up for the power button on this machine. For connectivity, you have the option to use a flash drive, and there is also an ethernet port that you can hook up to ChitiBox, which will allow you to transfer files on your network, which is pretty awesome. Yes, I'm excited to announce that the Slicer of choice is Chitubox. This is kind of becoming more of a standard, I feel, but I still feel like it's worth announcing because for me, it's very, very uh, appreciated compared to some of my other slicer experiences I've had for resin 3D printing. Now, as of today, the profile for this resin printer is not built into Chitubox. You have to add it, but with the instructions included with the printer, it takes you all but 30 seconds to two minutes tops, and you can enter in all of the different parameters and be up and running. So the printer arrived very well packaged. It was completely encased in foam. And one thing that I was really surprised with was the amount of accessories and things that this printer came with. There was things like Allen keys, flash drive, there was spatulas, there was gloves, there was extra FEP. There is even a 250 milliliter bottle of resin, which is a definite thumbs up. The, the standard, and I'm sure it's mostly associated with shipping, but most resin printers that I reviewed come with zero resin at all. And if you know that ahead of time, yes, sure, you can order some resin, but some people just get the printer assuming that it's got some resin. Like a lot of times FDM printers come with at least a tiny bit of filament. So the fact that it does give you 250 milliliters of resin to play around with is enough to get you up and running, testing out the machine and to figure out what resin you want to have on order. So when that resin runs out, you can pour in your next bottle of resin. The setup for this resin printer is very similar to any other resin printer I've ever gotten. The, the workflow or the initial setup basically looks like turn on the machine, 
check to make sure that the LCD screen is displaying a rectangle and that the UV lights are shining through. Remove the bat, loosen the screws on the build plate, put a piece of printer paper on the LCD screen, tell it to home itself, tighten those screws, and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, I know that was very quick. If you wanna see how to do this, check out the tons of videos on my channel and specifically videos on how to uh, level a resin build plate. But that being said, there's nothing special here. It is the same as you would expect on any resin printer. Once I was done setting up the machine, I took the included resin, which was a bright yellow resin, and I poured at least half to three quarters of it in the vat. I plugged in the USB flash drive and navigated through it to see if there was any test files. There was a couple. So I went ahead and went with the biggest one that I saw, which was a model of a deer. I hit print, I watched the printer go down, I was in here in my office while it was printing, I could hear the FEP sticking and releasing, sticking and releasing. At two and a half hours, I was able to see a little bit of the print kind of starting to show, everything looked fine. So I went to bed and in the morning, was greeted with a finished print. Although the print did finish, there was clearly some errors. The little mushrooms that were in the model didn't look quite right, and the deer, when it got to its antlers, they were very, very flimsy. They were supposed to be very crisp and sharp, and they were almost I don't wanna use the word floppy, but they definitely were a bit drooped compared to how they were supposed to be. Not exactly sure what the issue was. I went ahead and emptied the resin out of the vat, made sure that there was nothing stuck to the FEP film. I then went on to Thingiverse and found a model of SpongeBob. Like It was like a SpongeBob mesh with Thor sitting in a chair. And I figured that SpongeBob would be a perfect print uh, to do in this yellow resin. So I sliced it up with just the recommended settings. I transferred it over to the printer and I hit print. Same thing happened, it started printing, things were looking good. I could hear it sticking and uh, releasing, sticking and releasing. And after a certain amount of hours, I was able to see the build plate going up and down, but there was nothing on the build plate. So I went ahead and killed the print and I removed the, uh, the cured goop from the vat. MSLA printers are actually quite simple. There's not a lot of things going on with them. Typically, if you need to troubleshoot them, the things are make sure the LCD screen is working, which we had done, that was a check. Uh, make sure that the UV lights are working, which we also did, that was a check. Make sure your, setting, your settings in the slicer are looking correct, which I did double check that. So the, really the only other thing that was left was for me to check what was going on with the build plate. So I went ahead and I loosened the screws on the build plate, I re-leveled it with a piece of paper, and sure enough, the next print turned out perfect. Um, I've never had an issue with leveling a resin build plate, so I think that perhaps I've gotten, uh, maybe I got a little bit too confident in my ability to level correctly on the first try every try, but that's all it ended up being, was that I, when I leveled it initially, either had it slightly too close or slightly too far to where it just was not sticking enough to the build plate and the FEP was able to peel the print off. And so that's why with the first model, the, the main body of the deer turned out looking pretty good, but when it got to those fragile antlers, it was just pulling way too hard on the FEP, causing it to actually deform the print. After this, I printed out quite a few things. I printed out another test file that came on the SD card or the flash drive, which was of a pretty detailed uh, jewel ring. I printed out a uh, Vault Boy from Fallout Boy. I printed out a comp like kind of cool looking complex lattice cube or lattice structure, which turned out amazing looking. And then the last print I did with the yellow resin was just a four little um, uh, chess pieces from Make and I put one on each of the edges of the build plate just to make sure that it was able to print at the farthest parameters. And they were very small and very detailed and each one of them turned out perfectly. So that confirmed to me that yes, the printer is able to print uh, at least the full length and width of the envelope without any issues on the outer parts of the LCD screen or on the build plate. Once done, I wanted to print in a different resin. Although again, I'm very thankful that they did give you some resin to print with. The bright yellow resin does not do a great job of showing up details. So I went ahead and defaulted to what's arguably my favorite resin, which is Soriatec Fast Gray Resin. I went ahead and cracked open a bottle of that, poured it in, went over to my mini factory and I found this really awesome model of a totally just ripped genie that I went ahead, took over into chit two box, I, I uh, rotated it, I left it solid, I actually wanted to print it completely solid, but I rotated the model, added supports, and hit print, and the model turned out awesome. It turned out so, so good. Um, the, the level of detail in the model, the gray resin, and the combination of the high quality LCD screen on this printer did a great job of capturing every aspect of this model. I had about half a bottle of resin left and I wanted to do a big print. So I went again on my mini factory, found a super awesome Doom character model. 
I downloaded it. I didn't hollow it out again. I just decided that I've got the resin. I want it solid. I want it to feel kind of like an action figure or at least a, a solid figure and not hollow. So I just rotated him, scaled him as big as I could possibly fit on the build plate, added supports. Uh, again, I didn't mention this, but all of these models were printed at 50 microns. Normally when I'm printing um, with resin 3D printers, I do about 100 microns because the quality is still really good. Um, and if I was definitely going to be using this printer for batch printing, I would opt for 100 micron just to increase or, or decrease the print time. But I did 50 micron because that was what they had recommended in the setup and slicer settings. So I wanted to make sure that I at least followed the recommended uh, guidelines and parameters for this machine. So I went ahead and printed out the Doom model, which was roughly 12 to 14 ish hours, and it turned out sick. Now, this is Twofold, the machine did a fantastic job of printing. The character uh, modeler did a fantastic job of adding all of these crazy little details into the armor and to the inscribed uh, uh, text on the uh, sword. I mean, it, it is just an all around sweet model and it I, I couldn't have asked for a better print on this. Every, every part of it turned out perfect in my eyes. Overall, the CH-10 has been very, very impressive. There's no doubt that if somebody said, hey, you've got to bring a resin printer into the battlefield, that the CH-10 or the iron box would be the printer, the resin printer that I would bring. A combination of its 2K LCD screen and its really, really rigid, heavy frame uh, make this printer a winner in my eyes. If I did have to pick at one thing, the printer for how rigid it is and how solid the frame is, the actual arm that holds the build plate, if I put some pressure on it, I can make it move ever so slightly. Now, because in resin 3D printing, there's very, uh, very little um, strength that's being applied. I mean, other than the peel force of the FEP and the part, it's not really going to be an issue. It doesn't reflect into the prints at all, but with how solid the machine is, I do wish that they had made that arm just a little bit more rigid. Uh, again, that is just, if I had to pry at something, that is the one thing that I would nitpick at. If you have been looking for a very compact, sturdy, resin 3D printer to add to your workshop and you don't need the massive build volume of some of the resin printers that are out there, then the Lotmax CH10 or Ironbox is a great option. If you do want to find out more or purchase one of these bad boys for yourself, I will place a link in the descriptions down below. And if there's any questions you have about the machine that I didn't answer, please let me know and I will do my best to answer them. And if I don't have the answer, I have no problem reaching out to Lotmax directly to see if they can provide an answer. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. The channel has been doing killer lately and it's thanks to each and every one of you. I am immensely thankful for the amount of support and subscribers and comments and likes and shares that the channel's gotten lately. Um, seriously, you guys are fantastic. If you do enjoy the content and you want to support the channel a bit further, links will be down below to my Patreon where you can do so. It really helps in allowing me to spend more time doing what I love and creating content for you guys. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I make a new video every every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your ways. As always, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video, and on that note, I'm out. Peace, guys.